What's up guys? Thanks again for stopping back by the channel here at the Auto Shop Life, GRC54. So last video we talked about my top best buys from Snap-on of 2019 and I figure I'd get at you with one of my top five not so great buys 2019 from Snap-on. Now some of these ones, you know, I can't call them bad tools, but you know, maybe, maybe just they weren't tools for me. Maybe I should have did a little, a little more research on them. Like I said, guys, you know, I buy a lot of Snap-on tools. Sometimes I get impulsive on the truck. You, you know, we all been there. You know, we get on the truck, you know, you, maybe you think you need a tool until you get it and it's, you know, maybe you don't use it so much or it doesn't work as the way you thought in your head or one of those niche tools on certain cars. You know, you're getting a bunch of them. You need a specialty tool on these cars. You buy, you finally break down, buy the tool, and then all of a sudden, you know, the work dries up. You don't see it for months on end. So things that happen at that, but I got five of them. We're going to go through, talk about the reasons why, you know, I probably shouldn't have bought them or call them a not so hot buy or, you know, like I said, I can't call it a, a, a bad buy, but probably a buy I shouldn't have bought. So check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so before we start, just want to say, almost at 10,000 subscribers, got to gotta thank to all my subscribers that's been there, um, all you guys out there, subscribe to the channel, support the channel, you know, I, I, I wouldn't do these videos if it wasn't for you guys, you know, you guys out there that's been with the channel, supported the channel, I thank you, you know, you guys out there watching the video, not subscribe, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, got a big giveaway coming up at the 10k, so you guys stay tuned, make sure you check it out, make sure you subscribe, but getting into it. I have to say some of these tools, like I said, it, you know, it's kind of a bummer. You know, some of these tools cost money. You know, obviously most Snap-on tools cost money, but you know, I'll give you my top five buys and then my reasons that you know why I shouldn't have bought them, things like that. You guys, let me know down in the comments. You guys have these same tools or have tools like it and end up in the same situation, but some of this might turn into a rant. So bear with me, guys. We'll start with the first one. So the first one, we're going to start off with a light. So you guys seen this light, you know, I can't say it's a bad light. This thing does throw the lumens. This thing is a super bright light. But for me, you know, I got this thing, I think on a deal, you know, it's not cheap. It runs off the 18 volt system. You know, I already had 18 volt batteries. So, you know, I figured just buy a bare light, you know, what harm in that? But come to find out for, you know, a light this size, <clears throat> I'm in a shop. So, you know, a light this size for me here in the shop, <clears throat> You know, it, it just, it's not needed. It's really not needed, especially with, you know, these, these super small handheld flashlights that throw a lot of light. I mean, if you could see something, you could see something. You know, I'm not trying to work on these cars completely blinded by white light, you know, and burn out my retinas trying to work with these lights. But, you know, what I have done, what I have used this light for is maybe setting on the ground. You know, I got a car racked in the air. I set it on the ground and, you know, just to shine light up at wherever I'm working at. But what I've noticed on this light is, it's just too big, you know, it, I mean, it does articulate and move, you know, it doesn't move all the way down, you know, it's more like a floor light. What I'd like to see on this one is maybe some magnets on there, you know, the size probably could have been a little smaller also. It's definitely built well, but for me here at the shop, I probably didn't need this light, didn't have to buy it, and that's coming from a guy that pretty much has all the lights, you know, there is. I, you know, I can't stop buying lights sometimes to feel like it's a problem, but I've used this one, you know, I usually set it on the floor and you guys could actually see some of the weld marks on this, you know, I'm having this thing on the floor because it's not like you're going to tuck this thing up, you know, into a fender or, you know, hang it on the side of the hood or hold it in your hand while you're trying to work. You know, this thing is big, it's bulky. Uh, by the way, part number on this one is CTLFD8850. You guys are looking up the part number, I will leave links down in the description. but. Definitely shouldn't have bought this one this year. You know, I, I can't say it's a bad light. This thing is a super duper bright light. I think I did a video on this light. I'll try to put the card up top. I can't say I don't like it, but I definitely didn't need to buy it. This is definitely a not so hot buy of 2019. You guys have this light, like I said. It does what it's supposed to do. I actually believe this is the second series in it. They did a, a version one where, you know, putting out so much light, it melted the middle part where the light is because it put out so much heat. They did put like a, cooling fin on here like a, a heat sink on here it's made probably aluminum or something like that but uh 
you know, it's got the rubberized thing on there. It's got the switch on there. It also has an output for, you know, powering another USB or whatever, and that you could turn on and off. But uh, definitely could have did without this one, guys. This is number one. Probably number one on the list. All right. So number two on the list, I'm sure you guys seen it. It's uh, Snap-on's wireless test light. Part number on this one is EECT200. Now, I can't say it's a bad, I, you know, it's a bad tool. It's a great idea, but I think they should have capitalized on this. You know, it, it, it definitely finds power is basically what it does. You're not finding ground with this. So like on a normal test light with a wire, you know, you could hook the power, look for grounds, or you could, you know, got a lightener, or you could hook it to ground and find power. So with this one, basically what it does is there's no wire there. So it uses you as the ground, you know, whether, whether you're touching ground or you're sitting barefoot on something metal or on the car or whatever like that, it runs the ground through you. So that completes, you know, the circuit, obviously, you know, power that goes in must come out. So they use you as the ground, but they probably should have capitalized on this. You know, I can't say I don't use this tool. I've used it. I don't use it really too often anymore because it, it's just not dependable. You know, something like this, it's hard to base, especially when you're diagnosing. I mean, something for quick, maybe checking trailer powers and things like that. Yeah, that's fine. You know, you could always test the wire with something like this. It does go all the way down to three, you know, from three volts to 24 volts. So, you know, you could find your five volts reference with it. You got to be touching ground in order for the light to work. It does have, I think it, I think it beeps too. I'm not sure if there's a, like a, a vibration or anything like that, but I think it beeps. The light turns on only for power. But what they probably should have done, and my issues with this one, is they should have capitalized on it. You know, they could have a, probably a design like this, which is fine, but they should have maybe put to where you could hook a wire up to it also, you know, maybe something removable or something like that. You could hook a wire up to it also that you could put a ground on it, you know, that way it'll find your grounds too, and then that way you can make it removable. So that for you could use it as a normal test light also, because, you know, snap-on test lights aren't cheap, um, and then also use it as a wireless one too. Or they may, maybe should have went a step further and did some sort of, you know, like dongle or something like that to where, or Bluetooth or make it truly wireless or something not necessarily app related on your phone, but, you know, have like a, have like a wireless or Bluetooth dongle you hook to a negative battery and it's wireless. This thing searches for that, making sure it has a known good ground and then you could light it, you know, it could take the ground through you or something like that. But for what it is, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely built well. It's definitely snap-on. You know, I can't say I haven't used it, but it's definitely something I don't use anymore. And for the 50, 60 bucks they asked for this this year, I probably could have did without, you know, a normal test light was just fine for me. It's not like I'm walking around tripping over the wire or anything like that. Most of the time when you're looking for power back behind the trailer lights, you could find a ground, the bumper, or a fender, you know, anything. It's not like, it's not like it's hard to find a ground, you know, sometimes getting on a ground has paint on it or rust or corrosion, you know, it's hard to get a clean ground, but you know, something like this, great idea, great concept, but they should have capitalized on it. And for the 60 bucks, I'd rather spend that 60 bucks on just a normal test light or maybe an incandescent test light, a cylinder drop down, or you're checking for, you know, maybe a parasitic drain in a battery, you know, depending on the current flow, you can check the dimness of the bulb. LEDs don't really do that for me. You know, I find myself grabbing my older test light a lot more than my LED test light, but for a snap on, you know, the wireless test light, 60 bucks, seems a little steep. I probably could have did without this one. So number three, this one might actually shock a few of you guys out there. Um, but you know, I've thought about this one. And you know, in the last couple months, I probably say, uh, probably say I, I've used it less. You know, I still use it, but between the one I had to the one now, and this is a big issue I have with Snap-on is, they come out with great tools, but what I'd probably recommend, and, and you know, a lot of things that came out with a lot of great tools in the last two years alone, but what I've noticed with them is I probably should wait. So if they come out with a new fancy tool, something I may or may not want, it's probably best to wait a year because either, either the price is gonna drop, you know, first of all, it's probably gonna go on back or you're not gonna be able to get it if you don't get it right away, but that might be a good thing because they end up coming out with another version later, you know, you know, as opposed to the, the advanced multimeter. Now they got two different ones. They got one with more features than the other. So, you know, depending on what you're looking for, whether it's like the wireless capability of it or just the true RMS and all the other features, you know, they give you two different options. Another one is, you can see in the kit, 
I got my little temperature kit. I, th I think I did a video on this one this year, but I'm sure you guys can guess the one I probably shouldn't buy. And the reason being is the Predator Vision, the Snap-on Thermal Imager Elite. Now this one's um, part number EETH310. This is the Elite. But the reason why I probably shouldn't have bought this one this year is because I already had the older one. I had the, the, the 300, I believe the part number was. I ended up trading Rust Belt, a scanner for it, and I upgraded to this. Now, this ain't going to be the first upgrade we're going to talk about in this year's not-so-top buys, but I definitely like the features of this. But the issue I'm having is, you know, they, they ran with this. They ran with the first version maybe three years ago or whatever that was. You know, I ended up picking it up a year later thinking, okay, that's fine. Then they came out with this one, and now they got a third one that's coming out with a heavy price tag to match. And the issue I'm having is, I like, although I like the features on this, you know, it's a little costly. I like the features on it. There's a lot better features than the last one on it, but I figure, you know, the first one I had was doing just the same amount as this one was. You know, I find myself maybe not necessarily using some of the features, because now I'm used to using the older one and you know basically you could use these things for a lot and, and and I try you know when I buy a new tool I find every excuse to bust them out and use them when I can but then something newer comes out maybe it's out of sight out of mind things like that you guys know tools get lost in the toolbox and there's different ways of diagnosing a car so this is definitely a great way to diagnose a car but for the price they want for these and the features and everything else, I just don't think it matches. You know, I definitely probably could have been just fine with the first version, you know, getting done the same amount of work I get done with this one, except without so many features. So that's what I mean about, you know, a new tool comes out, wait a year, guys. You know, see if another one comes out, Snap-on comes out, another one that maybe is not gonna bother you if it has less features, or maybe they come out with a better one that has more features. So you know, whether it costs a little bit more money or whatever, it might suit your needs a little bit better. But this one, for what it is, I would have been just happier with the first one I had. You know, I definitely probably didn't have to upgrade to the Elite. At this point, hey, I did, I did, whatever. I'm glad I have it, but I definitely could have did without this one. Number three on the list of the not so hot buys, the Snap-on Thermal Imager Elite. All right, guys, so following down the same path, you guys see it, the new 18 volt brushless. Definitely, definitely could have did without this one this year. One of my big problems, and I'm gonna see if you're gonna do it, you pull this trigger a lot, it doesn't start. And I haven't pulled the trigger, but I wanna see if I can catch this on camera. You pull the trigger and nothing happens. Let's see. Uh, see, of course it's not gonna do it now, but I get that a lot on this one. That's one of the biggest pet peeves. I pick this thing up, I pop a battery in it, I walk up to whatever I'm using on, I go to pull the trigger and nothing happens. And I've actually had it, at first it was just you let the trigger go, hit it, and it'll start to work. Now it seems like I'm hitting the trigger two, three times before this thing actually starts to spin. I don't know what to deal with that. I don't know if you guys have this, you know, uh, you know CT9075 and have the same issues, but it's heavy. I definitely could have done without this one. I ended up getting this one on a killer deal this year, probably one of my newer tools in today's list, but I didn't need it. I, I don't, you know, I, I got it because of the deal, but uh, it's, it's a great impact, but for the cost of $950, I think with one battery or two battery, it comes with a charge or whatever the kit was, whatever the kit ran me, I don't know what the normal cost is. Like I said, I got it with a package deal, so I got it for a really good deal. The Milwaukee was doing just fine. The 2767 was doing just fine for me. You know, my other means of doing it, even for crying out loud, the older impact, Snap-on impact was doing just fine for me. Definitely could have done without this one. It's, it's just bulky, guys. You know, Snap-on did a good job making this. You could definitely see it's quality parts. You know, having it in a hand, when you hit the trigger and it actually, the anvil actually moves, you could definitely tell it's less vibration. You know, it, it seems like it's more controlled power. I'll give it that. I'll definitely give it that. But, you know, when I'm going at some of these fasteners, I don't care if it's controlled or not. As long as the impact doesn't fly out of my hand and it gets that fastener loose, that's all I care about. You know, it's not busting stuff up. You know, it's fine. You know, whatever. I, I get to work in a Honda. I'll get to work in a Bentley. I'll get to work in a BMW. It still gets me to work. So, you know, it, it's getting the job done. The Milwaukee's getting the job done. You know, the air tools were getting the job done. This one, for what it is, it gets the job done, but I don't need the premium controlled speed. You know, I don't need, as long as the work gets done, quality work gets done, the gun doesn't fly out of my hand, it doesn't break down, it does what it's supposed to do. Paying $1,000 for this heavy impact, 
it's just it's not worth the price tag definitely could have done without this one this year you guys let me know down in the comments it's a great I, I can't snap on make some great stuff you know and I can't wait till they come out with the rest of their production of stuff but this one not impressed you know I, I'm not impressed it's a it's a great impact but I feel maybe it should have been stronger or cheaper you know maybe if it was cheaper I wouldn't have such an issue with it but that could have been more money in my pocket to buy more tools that I probably shouldn't have bought this year or could have been on this list so big number four right here all right so number five definitely a great tool now this one this year and gotta explain this one a little bit too this one this year I bought this tool first between another tool that I'm gonna talk about and I can't say that it's a bad tool and I probably shouldn't have bought it but I probably should have did a mo little more research before I did I probably should have did a little more research before I bought it or I should have asked you know my snap-on guy hey you know is this is this kind of all they offered I knew that there was other kits out there but this kit here the EEP V507 this is for checking oil pressure you know or it's got all the adapters and fittings in it and all that stuff it's actually a really nice kit you guys know how I feel about these cases and all that stuff that snap-on gives you but it's got a pretty decent amount here. You got all your adapters for you know your Ford, Honda, Chevys to hook up. You know basically take out the uh, oil sending unit, pop this in, check your oil pressure and all that stuff. Great kit. You know I, I probably used it three, four times, whatever. And then I ended up getting the EEPV 508 kit, which is the trans and oil. And that kit actually comes with you know your two gauges, comes with all the fitting, you know more fittings and all that stuff for not that much more. So my mistake on this one is I picked the oil kit up, used it a few times, realized there was a trans kit, wanted to buy the trans kit, and I'm thinking, you know, obviously there's bigger adapters in the trans kit and also different threads in the trans one and a different gauge, but Snap-on actually sells one as a full kit. And I'm sure most of you guys knew that out there, but I actually didn't this year. When I picked this one up at the beginning of the year, I knew there was a trans kit, but I thought it was just basically the gauge and the rest of the adapters in the kit. But no, the 508 has all the same adapters as this kit has, plus the other gauge for not that much more money. So I probably could have done without this. I basically have everything you guys see in this kit right here, I have in the trans kit, the 508 kit. This is the 507 kit, and I have doubles now. So. You know, you got the two quick connects, you got all the fittings here, you got the one gauge, the tran kit comes with another gauge and the rest of the fittings. So now I got doubles of everything you see here. So, you know, my mistake on my part, you know, I probably could have did a little more research and find out, hey, okay, I'll hold off, I'll buy just the one kit and consolidate, have two tools in one. Stress that in the last video, obviously, the more things you can get done with one tool, the less space you're gonna have to take up, the less money you're gonna have to spend, the less things you'll have to take care of, the less stuff you'll have to replace, but, Definitely could have done without this one this year. All right, guys. So wrapping this one out, that's my top five not-so-hot buys of 2019 from Snap-on, Snap-on Tools Only. And like I said, guys, you know, don't be impulsive on the tool trucks like I am sometimes. You know, it, not to say I get it out of hand. You know, I, I, I like to say I'm good with money. I like to say, I, I, you know, I control my money and things like that. But, you know, sometimes in my mind, I feel like I need the tool. You know, and it, between the flashlight, you know the new brushless impact I know I didn't need those tools a lot of it in me is I wanted to check it out I wanted to see for myself you know all the hype about snap-on and all that stuff to see what I can do I, I definitely want to do a video comparing it directly to the Milwaukee so that's another good reason you know buying these tools for you guys showing you guys you know if you guys are out there thinking about buying these tools you guys see me whether you learn from my mistakes things like that you know you, YouTube's out there, plenty of information for us. Also, do your research, you know, like, like that oil, the oil pressure kit. If I would have just waited, you know, not to say I didn't know, like I said, I knew there was a trans kit, but I didn't know that kit came with everything for the oil pressure and then basically just another gauge and more adapters in the 508 kit. So, you know, do your research, do your homework, ask your Snap-on dealer, you know, if you're unsure and things like that. Because like I said, I don't think the prices on those two between the oil kit by itself and the trans oil kit was different, maybe a $50 difference or something like that. It wasn't that crazy expensive or anything like that. And as far as the upgrades, like I said, the thermal imager, you know, the first version, I wanna say it was a 300. I, I wanna say that was the partner. You guys let me know down in the comments, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was just fine and dandy with that one. You know, Rust Belt out there using it, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a great one. You know, I, I probably didn't need to upgrade that. I, I probably could have been just fine with the first version, getting the same amount of work done that I'm getting with the Elite 
with the older one. Now they got the newer one coming out. I'll show you guys on the screen here. You can see it in the, you know, this month's catalog they had it on there. You know, and I'm sure they got a heavy price tag to match on that one, the smaller screen, probably some of the same features. You know, I'll, I'll probably definitely be putting that in my hands when it gets on the Snap-on truck. Probably won't be buying it because I have the Elite, who knows what it has, but uh, you know, that's what it is. I put this information out there. You know, obviously 2019 went quick for me. Um, I bought a lot of tools. I, I definitely bought a lot of tools. I might even uh, treat you guys with maybe a video by itself and just what I've spent with Snap-on. You guys let me know down in the comments if, if you're curious to know. We, we can't let things get out of control. You know, obviously I buy these tools because they make me money because we use them just like everybody else. But uh, just want to do a quick one. Top five, not so hot buys from Snap-on. You guys remember to like, comment, subscribe. Hitting that 10K soon, so make sure you support the channel. Catch you in the next one. Signing out.